All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 1883 Speaker Series. My name is Mike Wozniak. I serve as the coordinator of leadership and programming in the Student Involvement and Parent Programs Office. Each week, we invite a campus or community leader to talk about how today's student can develop their leadership skills, as well as other advice regarding personal and professional development. We hope you learn some valuable lessons in the next 18 minutes and 83 seconds. Today's speaker is a husband, father, singer, poet, and the Vice President for Student Affairs at UND. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Art Malloy. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And good afternoon to those who are joining us virtually. Welcome to the 1883 Speaker Series. Again, my name is Art Malloy. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs. If you were here last week, you heard President Armacost talk about the path to leadership. And I agree with him that everyone has their own unique path, and everyone's going to learn how to lead in their own way. But today I want to talk to you about purposeful leadership. And I'm not going to give you a definition of what purposeful leadership is, because I think there are lots of different definitions of leadership, and they can be defined in many different ways. But what I would like to do is to talk to you about what I believe are three attributes of purposeful leadership. And the first attribute of purposeful leadership is that it is inquisitive. It's inquisitive. That means it's going to ask a question, a question generally about the human condition. It asks the question, why? It also asks the question, how? And as you see, um, Benjamin Franklin, in, in, this, in this particular quote, he talks about uh, what competent people do, but he also makes sure that we understand that when we ask the question why, and when we ask the question how, we are continuing to learn. The second aspect is that purposeful leadership is inspirational. So first it is inquisitive, it asks a question about the human condition. Secondly, it is inspirational because it requires you after you learn about, get, after you get the answer about the human condition, it then requires you to act. It requires you to do something. And as you can see, John Quincy Adams also says that your actions are gonna inspire other people to learn. They're gonna learn more, they're, they're gonna do more, and they're going to want to become more. So it is inquisitive, but it is also inspirational. And lastly, it is impactful. So these are three things that I want to make sure that when you walk away today, that you understand that purposeful leadership, even if you don't have a definition, it's going to always do three things. It's going to be inquisitive or we call that a sense of wonder here, it's asking the question why, asking the question how. And then it's going to be inspirational because people are going to see what you do as a result of asking that question, and it's going to motivate them to want to do something also. But finally, it's impactful. What you do makes a difference in the lives of others. That is what characterizes purposeful leadership. And as you see in this quote uh, from Jackie Robinson, if you know who Jackie Robinson is, you know the impact that he had. Because he was not afraid, he was not afraid to do something that no one else had ever done. And my hope is that for the students, you will not be afraid to do something because no one else has ever done it. That you will constantly ask the question why. You will constantly ask the question, how can we change this? That is that is that sense of wonder, constantly trying to learn more, constantly trying to do more. So who are the leaders who have inspired you? And as you see, there are 10 individuals here. And I don't know if you know all of them, but I bet you know some of them. The first one is who? You can say his name out loud. The first one is Nelson Mandela. The second person 
Right beside him is Ronald Reagan. Everyone should know who Ronald Reagan is. The third person is going to throw you. Anybody know who that third person is? Susan B. Anthony. And I don't have time to go in and tell you about what all these persons have done, but I'm giving you, I'm, I'm giving you a list of people, and you can, you can do your own research, but trust me, she had a huge impact in the United States and in the world. How about this next one? This next person, and you may not be able to see him very well, his name is Simone Bolivar. And if you, if you know anything about what we call South America, and you know how impactful Simone Bolivar was, because Simone Bolivar is actually called the liberator of the Americas, Simone Bolivar. Besides Simone Bolivar is another person who actually ended up leaving the United States to go back to become the leader in China. Anybody know his name? Anybody heard the name Sun Yat-sen? That is Sun Yat-sen. I bet you everyone can tell me who the first person is on that second row. Who does he look like? He is Leif Erikson. If you know what Leif Erikson, if, yeah, not, yes, some of you are laughing now because you're like, I, I should have known who that was. How about the person beside Leif Erikson? Mother Teresa. How about the person beside Mother Teresa? Who, who, who was that? Uh, that's, a, that's a good guess. Cassie said Madam C.J. Walker. This is Mary McLeod Bethune. And Mary McLeod Bethune, well, since I didn't tell you who everybody else was, I'm not going to tell you who she is either. <laughs> How about this next person? I heard, it, I, I heard a lot of you say it, Sitting Bull. And the last person, Martin Luther King. So there are lots of purposeful leaders that we can point to. These are just the ones that I pointed to. I'm wondering how many you also point to. Some of you, if I ask you if you could identify purposeful leaders, you might talk about your parents. You might talk about your teacher. You might talk about some of your professors. You might talk about an administrator that's had an impact on your life. So I'm going to talk about three people, four people who I have met that have had an impact in my life, and I'll tell you who they are. First one, Cynthia Marshall. She's the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks. And if you know much about the Dallas Mavericks, you know several years ago they had a whole lot of issues um, with sexism. They brought Cynthia Marshall in to be the CEO, and she has done an absolutely wonderful job with them. Now, why do I have Cynthia Marshall here? I have Cynthia Marshall here because we brought her to one of our, we, we brought her to a university where I used to work, and uh, she did not have to, but she gave internships to 15 students. She didn't come, she had a contract to come and speak, but after she spoke and she spent time with the students, she decided, I'm going to provide 15 internships with the Dallas Mavericks for students. That's why I hold her in high esteem. This other person is a face that some of you may know. He is E. Gordon Gee, and E. Gordon Gee is the current president of, of West Virginia University. He is the former president of Ohio State University, former president of Vanderbilt University, former president of Brown University. And he spent, he had actually two different tenures at Ohio State. Why do I have E. Gordon Gee here? Because E. Gordon Gee proved to me when he allowed me to shadow him that he cared about every person. He cared about the students, he cared about the faculty, he cared about the staff, and he tried to do everything he could do to bring people together. That's why I respect him, he was a purposeful leader. This other person is a person you may never see in your entire life, but I can tell you that P.J. Johnson had a huge impact on my life because he taught me something. I watched him lead, I watched him lead for seven years. 
And the one thing I can tell you is in 30 seconds, in spending 30 seconds with him, he made everyone feel like they were the most important person in the organization, the most important person at the institution. And he could tell you exactly why your job was important. He was a purposeful leader. And the final one is a gentleman who I call my mentor, Dr. Manning Marable. He has passed away. As a matter of fact, he won the Pulitzer Prize and he died two weeks after he won the Pulitzer Prize. But I had the opportunity to be his, his teaching assistant. And, and what I can tell you is uh, he actually believed that collectively all of the problems of the world could be solved with an education. All the problems of the world could be solved on a college campus. He believed it, and I believe it also. Maybe we're both idealists. So here's the question. How does one determine their purpose? How does, how does someone determine their purpose? I think it's uh, fairly easy. It begins with curiosity. It begins with curiosity. You indeed. We call that sense of wonder. How do you determine your purpose? It starts with curiosity. You heard me say that the three eyes. First eye is what? It is inquisitive. You are curious about something. So what happens when you become curious? It's followed by the passionate pursuit of your value. It's followed by that which you actually believe in. Not what someone else believes in. Because if it's what someone else believes in, you're just following the crowd. It's what you believe in. So that's how you determine your purpose. And then your values, your values are going to lead you to that purpose. Starts with a question. Starts with curiosity. So, I'd like to, in the few minutes that I have left, I'd like to talk to you about three examples of purposeful leadership. Three examples, and I'm going to talk about three people. Two of them you don't know. One of them, my hope is that you will recognize. But I want to talk about them because I think they, they exemplify those three eyes. They exemplify that purposeful leadership is inquisitive, that purposeful leadership is inspirational, and that purposeful leadership is, what's the last one? Troy? Impactful. All right, hopefully by the time I'm done with this, you'll be able to name all three of those. This gentleman, and I chose him for a reason, is William Lloyd Garrison, Sr. William Lloyd Garrison Sr. is a man who dedicated his life. He dedicated his life to the abolition of slavery. He doesn't look like a black man to me because he's not a black man. He's Caucasian. And I wonder why this Caucasian man in the 1830s dedicated his life to the abolition of slavery. Not only did he dedicate his life to the abolition of slavery, he inspired so many others to do the very same thing. So that's William Lloyd Garrison. Among the things he did, of course, he was the most celebrated abolitionist. Secondly, he started a newspaper called The Liberator, and he went from one person to thousands of people in his movement. And of course, when slavery was abolished in the United States, he ended the organization in 1865. I'll come back and talk about him in just a second. The second person is one that I know you all have seen before. Her name is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was the greatest conductor of the Underground Railroad. She led hundreds of slaves to freedom, to the North.
she was also nicknamed Moses. They called her Moses. And then this last person is one that you probably don't know either. His name is A. Philip Randolph. A. Philip Randolph was the most prominent black member of the labor movement in the 1800s. No, in the 1900s. The most prominent black man. A. Philip Randolph started, founded, a union called the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters. Because during that time, most people were not traveling by planes. They were traveling by train. So the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters, he started that. Not only did he do that, he also um, organized the first March on Washington. The first March on Washington. How many of you thought the first March on Washington was in 1963? Yes, I did too. I did too. The first March on Washington was organized in 1941, and he organized 100,000 blacks to come to Washington because he was asking for something. And what he was asking for was the end of discrimination in the military and for blacks to be able to have the right to bid for government contracts. And what I can tell you is, that did happen. Now I see I have about three minutes left, so I'm going to now bring all this together for you. Why did I choose these three people? Well, I'll tell you why, because they were all connected. I said, I said it starts, purposeful leadership starts with a question. It's inquisitive. The person who asked the question was William Lloyd Garrison. Not only did he ask the question, he then acted. And when he acted, he began to inspire thousands. One of the persons that he inspired was a woman by the name of Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman traveled from New York to Boston where he was having meetings, and she sat in on his abolitionist meetings, and they became friends. And you probably heard me say she was called Moses, do you know who gave her the name Moses? William Lloyd Garrison. That, he asked the question, but he had also inspired her to act. So, now you may be wondering, well, how the heck do we jump from the 1800s to the 1900s? I'll tell you how. When you live your life purposefully, when you lead purposefully. I use the word inspire, did I not? Not only did he inspire his son, who also started a newspaper called The Nation, he also inspired his great-grandson. And his great-grandson spent a lot of time in the government. His name was Lloyd K. Garrison. And Lloyd K. Garrison, and he is a white man, Lloyd K. Garrison. Lloyd K. Garrison was a prominent member, prominent leader in the NAACP. He was a prominent member of the Urban League, and he inspired a gentleman by the name of A. Philip Randolph. But not only did he inspire A. Philip Randolph, he led the first march on Washington. When Martin Luther King got ready to do the second march on Washington, he already knew who A. Philip Randolph was. He already knew that this man had organized 100,000 people to come to Washington, D.C. So, and, and you see in this picture, this is A. Philip Randolph in the middle. If you look at the picture of the second march on Washington, I call it the second march on Washington, you can call it the 1963 march, but when that happened, arm in arm with Martin Luther King was A. Philip Randolph. I say that to say that purposeful leadership is 
inquisitive. It's going to ask a question about the human condition. Purposeful leadership is going to be inspirational. When you start to act on your values, you're going to inspire others. Not only will you inspire them immediately, you may inspire them through generations. And then last, it has an impact because I don't know that Martin Luther King would have done the things that he did had it not been for William Lloyd Garrison. So as I close, I want to make sure that you understand that at UND, whether you're students, faculty, or staff, you can lead your own way, each and every one of you. And when the mantle of leadership is passed to you, you will be ready. You will be ready. And I hope that when the mantle is passed that you will receive it. And I believe that as you begin to pursue your values and act on them, that you will be able to understand that what you do will encompass those three things that I call purposeful leadership. You ask a question that no one else wants to ask. You ask the question that everybody else believes is impossible, and you try to figure out how can we make this happen. At UND, we say that we are leaders in action. What we say is important. What we do is going to be even more important. Thank you so much for listening to me talk to you about purposeful leadership. And we hope to see you again next week when our speaker is going to be uh, Colonel Timothy Curry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Malloy. Just a small token of our appreciation for this. Thank, Thank you, you again. Much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. See you all same time next week. Again, Colonel Tim Curry, uh, prior commander of the Grand Forks Air Force Base, will be here. Thank you.